Good afternoon, and welcome back to part two of the Virgin Train story. GNER's East Coast Main Line was due to be refranchised in 2006, and Virgin certainly had its eyes on it. The thing is, they were slightly ambitious in their proposals. Whilst GNER was proposing a small new fleet of Pendolinos, Virgin suggested building an entire dedicated TGV line to run parallel to the East Coast Main Line and allow for 330 km an hour operation. Needless to say, this didn't happen, and the franchise was re awarded to GNER, who promptly went bankrupt and were replaced by National Express. But it wasn't just the East Coast being tendered. After failing to obtain a preferred bidder status from the Strategic Rail Authority, the cross country franchise was put up for rebidding, and this time Virgin didn't come out so well despite seeing a number of improvements to the route. Whilst failed franchise bids are top secret, so it's impossible to know for certain, it does seem likely that Virgin's bid would have included longer trains to deal with the increased capacity required. But Arriva, a Deutsche Bahn subsidiary, proposed that they could operate the service with no government subsidy, i.e. make the service terrible. And well, the DFT liked that. So, in November 2007, the cross-country route was handed over to Arriva, who proceeded to perform one of the laziest reliveries ever, do virtually nothing to the train's interiors, and basically completely forget about the capacity issue for a good 15 years. Anyway, 2007 wasn't a particularly good year for Virgin West Coast either. On the 18th of February 2007, Network Rail failed to carry out a scheduled inspection of a set of points just outside the village of Greyrig on the West Coast mainline. Five days later, on the 23rd of February, a Class 390 Pendolino derailed at 95 miles an hour, at exactly the same location. The train, 390033 City of Glasgow, ended up in a heap at the bottom of an embankment, and one passenger died. Network Rail was found to be entirely at fault, with a lack of points maintenance being the direct and more or less only cause of the incident. Still, it is remarkable to note just how well the Pendolinos performed, as looking at the wreckage you'd think there'd be many deaths, but many of the 109 on board weren't even injured. However, it was decided that repairs would mitigate the train's safety capabilities in the future, so the decision was taken to write the unit off. This meant that Virgin was now a train short, and they needed to fill this somehow. And their solution, to rail enthusiasts alight, was a rake of Mark III coaches, refurbished in Virgin livery and given interiors similar to that of the Pendolinos. Well, if you can call them similar. The train's unusual looks gained it the nickname Pretendolino. Someone, give the person who came up with that name a medal. But by 2010, it was decided that a more permanent solution to the capacity issues was needed. So, in partnership with the DFT, Virgin purchased an extra four 11-coach Pendolinos and extended 31 of the 9-coach sets to 11 as well. But now, Virgin's eyes were turned to the 2012 rebidding of the West Coast franchise. And, after the shock loss of cross-country, were determined to win this time. So when, in August 2012, it was awarded to First Group, Virgin was extremely surprised. Indeed, it seemed like an odd decision on the part of the Department for Transport. Virgin had more than doubled passenger numbers and significantly increased service quality. So why should they be stripped of the franchise? Sir Richard Branson slated the supposed insanity of the decision and decided to take legal action against the Department for Transport over what he saw as an unfair bidding process. And in fact, it was eventually concluded that there were serious flaws in the DFT's choice, and therefore, the Virgin franchise was restored with immediate effect, to continue operating in the short term until a new agreement could be reached. So, whilst Virgin had secured an extra few years at the helm of the West Coast franchise, things were reasonably stagnant, with the exception of the withdrawal of the Pretendolino set in October 2014. This was quite sad, but it did mean that Virgin now had a consistent fleet of just Voyagers and Pendolinos. Now, with just one franchise remaining, and even that being only an extension of an existing agreement, it seemed that Virgin Trains wasn't going to stay around for much longer, and would have a quiet few years and then disappear from the realm network altogether. But this couldn't be further from the truth. In January 2014, the Department for Transport rebid the East Coast franchise, famed not only for its glamour and prestige, but also for its ability to underperform on franchise agreements, with both GNER and National Express being unable to pay the dividends to the government that they'd promised. The three bidders were First Group, a keyless consortium with Eurostar, 
and finally, Stagecoach, in partnership with Virgin Trains. And in November 2014, it was announced that the East Coast franchise would go to the newly formed Virgin Trains East Coast. This time though, Virgin only held 10% of the company. 90% went to Stagecoach, and they were nowhere near as ambitious as their previous 2006 bid. There wouldn't be any new high-speed lines, they'd just be a continuation of the Department for Transport's Intercity Express project, which would have happened under the previous nationalised operator anyway. But Virgin would still leave their mark. They insisted on providing a buffet, as opposed to the trolley system that was favoured by the DFT, the one that was introduced on Great Western Railway's IETs, much to my irritation. But this was all some way down the line. In the meantime, Virgin East Coast would continue to operate their inherited fleet of Mark IVs, Class 91s and HSTs, and paint them first into a quite striking interim livery, before calling in experienced graphic designer Sam Jessup to create an entirely new red and white branding, which would create a flashing impression as a train passed by at high speed. They would also refurbish their entire fleet of trains into a very different style. Nothing much happened over the next few years, but in 2017 Virgin launched their first new livery for some time. Well, not including the East Coast, of course. This was a flowing silk livery, and started to be rolled out on Pendolino's Voyagers and the Zoomers alike. It was simple, but at least it was fresh. However, things weren't predictable for long. In June 2017, it was announced that passenger revenues on the East Coast mainline had performed nowhere near expectations, and therefore Virgin East Coast was unable to pay the government the money it had promised. As a result, an early termination agreement was made with Virgin East Coast and the Department for Transport, with the franchise ending three years early in 2020. However, by just 2018, the situation had deteriorated to a point where something needed to be done urgently, and therefore, on the 24th of June, Virgin Trains East Coast handed over operations to the state-owned London North Eastern Railway, it was an unceremonious end to what had once been thought to be a transformational agreement, but was really necessary. Staff morale was incredibly low as well, and very few people were confident about the future of Virgin on the East Coast. But even though public confidence in Virgin was shaken, the situation seemed to reflect worse on the government than anyone else, with the bidding system agreed to encourage overbidding and completely unattainable franchise commitments. Things weren't all bad, though. In 2016, Virgin launched Beam, an onboard entertainment streaming service that offered passengers films, television programs, and even magazines. Beam inspired many other train operating companies to start their own streaming services. However, they didn't really last long, with almost all being withdrawn around the pandemic. However, Virgin led the way between 2016 and 2019, dominating onboard train entertainment. By 2019, though, Virgin's 2012 franchise extension had caught up with them, and it was time for the West Coast to go back under rebidding. This time, as a new franchise was to include initial operations of the HS2 High Speed Line, opening then in 2026, bidders were required to partner with a company that had experience in high speed rail operation, and Virgin, with their partner Stagecoach, decided to opt for SNCF, the French national high speed operator. But it was not to be. Stagecoach had previously been involved in a pension dispute with the DFT, and it was found that they were at fault and failed to properly accommodate for staff pensions. As a result, the Virgin Stagecoach SNCF partnership was disqualified, and the franchise was awarded to Virgin's old enemy, First Group. First opted to brand the route of Anti, and in the final days of Virgin Trains, the Pendolinos were stripped of their Virgin branding and operated in all white, ready for the changeover. I had the privilege of travelling on Virgin Trains on their last day of operation, the 7th of December 2019, and it was quite an experience. Stations were dinked out in bunting, staff were proud in their virgin uniforms, and some were even making announcements to show their appreciation for working for the company over the past several decades. This is remarkable. Never before or since has a train operating company managed to command such loyalty over its crew and passengers, and though they weren't perfect, they were a good operator, and it was very sad to see them go. Alas, just a few years later and passengers will be begging the return of virgin trains for Avanti's performances let's say, uh, diabolical, to put it lightly, with certain routes like London to Manchester being cut from three trains an hour to just one as a result of staff shortages. 
All is not lost, however, and there are still several locations where you can find remnants of Virgin Trains, or even get very close to experiencing what it was actually like to travel on the Virgin Train in this day and age. At several former Virgin Train stations, the Virgin typeface can be found abundantly, and Avanti's first-class lounges at most major stations haven't been refurbished since they took over the franchise. Whilst Avanti's voyages have been refurbished, Cross Country's units still retain their original interiors, though Arriva's cleaning standard is hardly comparable to their predecessor. A few nine-coach Pendolinos with Avanti have also yet to receive a refresh at the time of posting, though they are rapidly being refitted, so travel on one whilst you still can. Anyway, I've been Louie, recording this on behalf of GW, whose mic's currently a bit broken. Feel free to join the Discord server, the link is in the description down below, and goodbye.